has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I've bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Darkest Dungeon is about making the most of a bad situation. Quest will fail or must be abandoned. Heroes will die, and when they die, they stay dead. Progress autosaves constantly, so actions are permanent. The game expects a lot out of you. How far will you push your adventurers? How much are you willing to risk in your quest to destroy the hamlets? What will, will you sacrifice to save the life of your favorite hero? Thankfully, there are always fresh souls arriving on the stage coast, seeking both adventure and fame in the shadow of the... Darkest Dungeon. Hey everyone, I'm the Depressed Dior, and this is... Darkest Dungeon. This is obviously early access as it says down below. Um, it should be uh, available on Steam, uh, at least the early access on the February the 2nd. It is actually January 30th uh, as of recording this because I'm a backer of uh, this particular game. I backed it on Kickstarter and it is one of the games uh, one of the games I was actually really looking forward to. I'm usually rather cynical about uh, upcoming titles, but this one I was really kind of eager to start playing. So, uh, let's go ahead and get this started. We're going to make a campaign. Uh, this game does not have uh, Steam Cloud sharing yet, so uh, I have played a little bit on my laptop uh, during a lunch break, and, and uh, that's about my experience with the game hands-on. I do know a bit about the game just from, you know, watching uh, developer videos and stuff like that, but beyond that, it's just uh, mostly blind. So, let's get this going. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud. Um, I'll do some sound checks, uh, hopefully after this video. I did a few before starting, but you know how that, how that ends up. Anyway, so, we get to name... Now, what this names is actually your household, so we're gonna name it Scarlet. Because that's really the only name I can think of. Okay, now it's made, and we get to go through a little tutorial. Actually, the first several missions are going to be kind of tutorial, but that doesn't make the game easy at all. As the game mentioned, this game has permadeath. Uh, what you play as in this game is you don't play as any of the adventurers. You play as the um, that uh, person that's part of the house that just came back. Uh, I guess that was his father or something. Um, committed suicide, and it's up to him to uh, try to restore the Hamlet. And to do that, he has to hire adventurers and try to keep them alive, and uh, all sorts of fun stuff. So, let's go ahead and get this going. You will arrive along the old road. 
It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steel yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. So yeah, that uh, voice was the narrator. You get to hear him a lot throughout the game, maybe a little too much. Uh, my Darkest Dungeon just said it's not responding, so that's why you probably see a black screen right now. Um, hopefully it's okay. Um, it was running fine on my laptop. Hopefully it'll be all right on this. Just waiting it out. Do, 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 do. But as the mention of, you know, madness and stuff like that, that is part of the game. Uh, this game does have a stress mechanic. And as your adventurers go on more of these crazy adventures um, and seeing such, you know, abominations and, fight, and being forced to fight them and endure them, they get more and more stressed and they'll actually develop traits that will actually influence how they play. Ah, here we go. Map navigation, you are currently in a room. To move uh, forth, click on the, another room on the map display. This will take you to the connecting hallway. All right, uh, when you start the game, you will always start on the old road, and you're gonna start out always with two uh, two characters, or two adventurers, who are, I guess, their, your escort. Uh, we're gonna, we start out with Reynald, the Crusader. I don't know if you can change the names here. Um, and Dismas, the Highwayman. Each of them have their own stats and quirks. They also have their own gear. Um, gear is pretty much specific to um, to the class. And you generally don't find uh, equipment. Uh, you can find uh, additional accessories for characters, but other than that, uh, you have to upgrade weapons and armor, uh, blacksmithing and stuff like that. Now, also, every character generally starts with uh, random traits. Um, we got Warrior of Light who does a little more damage when the light level is above uh, 75 or above. This thing up here, this little torch here, this is the light level. It will go down as you progress. Um, there are ways to increase your light level, mainly through torches. Um, and the higher it is, the, um, generally the better you are at things like scouting and catching the monsters off guard. But as it gets darker, uh, the monsters will get more and more an advantage. But the chance of getting treasure generally increases as it gets darker. So it's a trade off there. Um, Kleptomaniac, and there's also negative traits. We got Kleptomaniac, which means this character has a chance, is prone to stealing items. What that means is as you explore the area and you run into an object like a pouch or a chest, there's a chance that he will just grab the stuff for himself. Like he won't even get an option, he'll just grab it. Uh, usually you pick someone that opens chests or interact with objects. But in this case, there's a chance that every time you encounter an object, that he'll just go and do something and steal the items for himself. Um, and then God-fearing means uh, he has limitations on what, how, how he can re reduce his stress. And the, in this case, he can only reduce his stress, stress by praying, which is very limiting. And then we got Desmus the Highwayman. He's got a hard knocket. So he's uh, got additional stun resistance. There's various resistances in this game. He has quick reflex ah, reflexes, which gives him plus two speed. I don't know exactly what's... Uh, oh, here we go. No, this doesn't tell me. Okay, I don't exactly know what speed does in this game. I think it's turn order, but I'm not certain. Uh, you got accuracy, crit, damage, dodge, and protection. So I think speed is turn order. All right, um, he also is a known cheat, so he's not allowed to gamble in town, which is fine by me. Okay, so you can actually move with the left and, uh, with the W, sorry, with the A and D key, you can move left and right, but right now we're in a room, so the only way we can exit is by clicking on another room. Brigands have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. Okay. Hallway movement. While in the hallway, press D to move forward and A to move back. If you prefer the mouse, you can click ahead or behind the party to move them. 
Now, something to note, if you can move backwards, but moving backwards will actually give you stress. Because it, I guess it represents being like fearful and kind of like retreating. Um, now, there, both these characters have 10 stress at the moment. They also have full HP. Stress is going to go up while HP will go down. Go figure. Um, also, each of the classes in this game will have their own unique skills, uh, which you can actually swap out when you're in town. Right now, we just have these starting things, which are just fine. Anyway, let's go ahead and start walking. Oh, yep, just got some stress from just walking. Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion, that all may hear of your arrival. Oh great, starting with AoEs already. Kill the enemy. Combat is turn-based. On your hero's turn, click a skill icon, then click on the highlighted target. If you can't select a particular skill, it's because that hero needs to be standing in a different spot or there are no valid targets. Pass over the skill to see the requirements. Okay, so the way skills work is you can see here there are white and red dots. The white dots represent what position the character has to be in, in the party to use the skill, and then the red dots represent what they can hit using that skill. So with this, uh, Desmus can be in the the third, second, and first slots, and he can hit uh, the first or second uh, slot of the enemy. Um, any sort of connecting dots like this one um, represents AoEs, which means this one will actually hit all uh, the first th uh, three characters, uh, no matter what. Uh, there's also things like self buffs and all that good stuff. Anyway, uh, let's see, we got damage. Well, this is an AoE, we don't really need that. That's a pistol shot. All right, we'll go ahead and do open vein, which causes bleed, which is a dot. Just take bleed damage every turn. It's usually like one or two points of damage. Um, we got some various attacks here. It also tells you if it's melee or ranged and so forth. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. It does damage and causes stun. Stun will mean that their next action will be removing the stun, so they pretty much miss a turn. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Yep, get some money. We also have a little bit of food, not much. Uh, the way food works is every unit you uh, eat will actually give back one or two HP. It's also used for, um, as you spend time in a dungeon, everyone has to eat or else they'll take damage and stress. Um, it's also used when you're camping, uh, which we'll deal with later. Interactive objects. While exploring, you, you will often find interactive objects. Click uh, or press W to investigate them. Take a look at, at this tent. Okay, well, since he didn't automatically take it, that means we can go ahead and loot it. Okay, clearly the clearly where the ambushers camp. All right, let's go ahead and search. Get ourselves Leave nothing unchecked. There is much to be found in forgotten places. Thank you, narrator. Uh, so we got some money, which is just raw gold uh, and emeralds, which will take up an inventory slot, but you can sell it at the end of the mission. Go ahead and take those. And here's the next room. An ambush. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. Indeed. Alright, well, this he said it was an ambush, but we actually surprised them, which means we get to go first. If you get surprised, um, what will happen is um, your, your formation will get shuffled, which is generally really bad. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do a uh, Grape Shot Blast, which is an AoE. So... Then we're gonna go ahead and can we hit him. No, we cannot. This guy's actually taking up two slots. That's why I can't hit him. And this is actually an AOE. Go figure. All right. In that case, I'll just go ahead and open that and see if I can stun him. Nope, he resisted. All right. He get the gun. got to go first. Oh, and that shot knocked him. Uh, it did damage and pushed him back. A little annoying, so now I'm stuck with this move. Well, that's okay, Dismiss is awesome. Alright, ow. Death waits for the slightest lapse in concentration. So those black numbers are stress. Uh, we got, they, both characters got critted. About to break. Yeah, yeah, narrate, I get it. So, um, the black numbers are stress. Um, various things can cause stress. Just being in the dungeon will gradually give you stress. Um, getting crit will cause stress, people dying will get stress. Um, there are also ways to reduce stress by getting like critical hits uh, of your own, killing monsters, um, just various things. Anyway, well, um, 
do you smite or try going for the stun? I think I'll go smite. Smack. Alright, round three. Go first, go figure. Getting peppered with shots, that's not good. Alright, good hit. It's gonna take some- oh, took four damage, nice. Rain of whips. Gave me bleed, so now I have a dot on me. The bigger the beast, the greater yeah, the Yeah, so glory. that white number was uh, gain, uh, reducing your stress. There you go, gets bleed. And you die from the bleed. Victory. Perhaps the turning point. Okay, so we got a bust. We got four of them. These things are um, important. Um, I'll go ahead and explain those later. Quest completed, but we can also loot this chest, so let's go ahead and do that. It is trapped, but I resisted it. So yeah, this tutorial gives you a chest at the end that's trapped and has nothing in it. Joy. Anyway, what that chest would have done was given me Blight, uh, but he resisted it. Uh, Blight is pretty much just like bleeding, it's just a different so sort of uh, dot damage. Anyway, uh, we completed the quest, so we click this. Alright, got some money, got some money, and we got those uh, heirlooms. There are multiple types of heirlooms, and each of them are a form of currency for various upgrades on your Hamlet. Alright. Stress faster. Stress above 50. Uh, doesn't eat uh, food. Or reduce food consumption, I guess that's what it is. Okay, that's not bad, I guess. Uh, Renault didn't get any traits, but yeah, after every adventure, you can get random traits. As far as I can tell, they seem pretty random, but I don't know. Like, I've gotten ones where I get phobias of dungeons I haven't even been to yet. So I think it's pretty random at the moment. Not really as context sensitive as uh, I would like. Anyway, return to town. I'm hoping the frame rate's not too bad. I have to record my screen, like a, a section Welcome of my. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Yep. So we're this guy. We're uh, the caretaker. We're not doing so well. Uh, the, we are now the Scarlet Estate. Uh, let's see. So Dismas and Reynold gained a level. Um, various events might occur during, throughout the week. Um, right now it's just that, I think. Yeah, so I've been escorted to the Hamlet. Okay. Uh, anytime on screen you can get pull up information and help stuff. Not a big deal. Anyway, this guy's Reynolds always whining. Um, as people get stressed and stuff, they'll be like talking, like as you hang out in town, like, "Oh, please don't send me again." Anyway, uh, we did get a bunch of starting uh, items that we can use to upgrade buildings, which we'll definitely take advantage of. Um, we got two areas. We have the graveyard. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth, awaiting merciful oblivion. Yeah. So every person that dies is going to be listed here. And then we have the stagecoach. Women Stage and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. Alright. Stagecoach stage is your hero lifeblood. You'll need to recruit these two heroes to fill out your party of four. Drag and drop them into your roster. While you're here, spend some starting resources on upgrade the stagecoach network. This will increase the number of heroes available here in the future. To upgrade, click the plus symbol on the left and then click the upgrade. Okay, so we get to start out with Hatchet, the, uh, the Vestal of Seeker rank. A sister of battle. Pious and unrelenting. Okay. And we get a plague doctor named Deet. What better laboratory than the blood soaked battlefield? Okay. We'll go a little bit about them in a bit. So, upgrades. So, yeah. Uh, the closest I can really uh, relate this to is maybe XCOM or Rogue Legacy. Probably more Rogue Legacy in some cases. 
um, you literally just spend your crest and stuff to upgrade various buildings, and they'll, as you upgrade them, they'll give you more stuff. We can either increase the network, which will give us more uh, people to hire um, every week. Uh, essentially, every dungeon we complete, or every mission we've complete or failed, we'll get more. Uh, we'll get another two people. But if we upgrade it, they'll give us three people. And in this case, that is exactly what I want. More arrive, foolishly seeking fortune and glory in this domain of the damned. Right. And then we got the hero barracks, which increases the size of the hero roster. Um, which I think we start out with eight or ten as our max. And every rank will give us more. Uh, I don't really care about that. What I do want to go ahead and do is actually get rank two, which will give us four people every week. Which means essentially we get a party's worth of people every week to use as we please. Um, something else in the note, if you look over here, the stress hasn't gone down. These characters' stress carries over from the completed missions. And yet there are ways to reduce it in town, but right now we don't have access to that. Anyway. Great heroes can be found even here, in the mud and rain. Yep. So now we'll get four, which will also it also gives us a variety. Like what we get in these slots is completely random, with the exception of this first one. Uh, from what I can tell, every time you come here for the first time, you'll always get a Vestal and you'll always get a Plague Doctor. All right. So let's go ahead and close that up. And that's all we have right now. Everything else requires us to complete quest to unlock. Um, yeah, yeah. Why are you whining so much? We can right-click these characters and we can look up some of their more details. They have camping skills, which um, are things that can, that can be beneficial when you're camping, which we're not going to worry about right now. Um, he has... Their, every class has seven abilities. Um, and when you pick up a character, they'll generally always start with four. And then you can unlock more by through uh, one of the buildings in this game. There's also a bunch of resistances. And uh, that's about it. So... What's nice is this game will actually tell you a preferred position based off what skills you have. So this character has a lot of melee skills, so it's generally better to have him in melee. Um, and then that's about it. So let's go ahead and check out Dismiss. Okay, so he has all of his moves. He also has his own unique camping skills. He also unlock more camping skills. Here's our new person. Oh man, Reynold, you just never, you never, you never stay quiet. Anyway. So this is uh, Vestal's quirks. She has on guard, so first round she gets plus dodge and speed. She is light sensitive, so if um, if the light is above zero, she actually does less damage. That's actually annoying. She also automatonophobia. Um, so if she's fighting anything that uh, is human, they'll actually do more stress damage to her. So she de So that's something to note. Um, she starts out. Oh, this is. Wow, she actually has the worst. She has the worst start. Okay, so the skill she starts out with is she has a melee attack. That's just an attack with a mace. She has dazzling light, which is a ranged attack um, that affects the front rows. Um, doesn't do much damage, but it does increase your light um, every time you use it. Also, I think it has a chance of stunning. I guess that the good news is you can try stunning with it. Um, she has an AOE heal that heals everybody for one to two damage. Not very much, but it's better than nothing. Uh, and then she has Hand of Light, which I've never seen before. Uh, ranged attack, but you have to do it in the front rows. Uh, do, 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 do. Decent damage... I guess. Self, almost 15% damage. Oh, and yeah, every time she uses it, I guess she gets a buff against unholy uh, enemies. Um, to be honest, this is not the best layout of skills for her. It's completely random, but there are skills like Judgment which is an attack, a very ranged attack that can heal her at the same time. There's also the healing, the single target heal, which is very good, but we didn't get any of those. So yay for that. All right, this is our Plague Doctor. Uh, she is a Slayer of Eldritch. So any Eldritch type she does additional, uh, has a higher chance of hitting and critting. She can resist afflictions and she is curious, which means she'll actually um, take, take control and read books sometimes. I like how uh, Renal will steal things. And she actually has minus 5% damage when she uses ranged attacks, which is not exactly the best. Um, so her abilities, um, she has ability to remove uh, Cure Blight and Bleed. It has a base 100% chance. I failed this thing twice, don't ask how. Incision, incision which is a melee, uh, it's actually kind of a ranged melee attack. Um, 
decent damage and can cause um, bleed. Blinding Gas, which can cause stun, it looks like. Doesn't do much damage, but can stun. It's also an AoE. And then she has Noxious Blast, which can cause blight. So she's all about ranged. Uh, she's supposed to be a caster type. And yes, she is a she. Um, but yeah, like Doctor, all about poison stuff. So that takes care of all of that. Now in here, we can also rename our, our heroes. So we'll name you... Medicine. All right, we got medicine. You know what? I will go ahead and name you Raymo. All right, so um, uh, we'll name you. What should we name you? Name you Driss. Oops. Driss. You'll probably guess some of these names, but uh, other names you might not know what they're from. They're from Let's Plays, go figure. And for you, you will be Rayask. Make sure I spelled that right. Yes, I have. All right. So that takes care of about all of that. I'm going to go ahead and call it a video. And when we come back, we will start on our first mission. Our first actual mission, that is. I am the Depressed Eeyore, Darkest Dungeon. See you guys later.